class. Um, what I'm going to do is sort of review for your test that's uh, coming up over Lewis structures and IUPAC naming. So this is sort of just a study guide that I want you guys to listen to. Obviously, if you don't understand something, pause it, work it back so that you can understand how to do this. The main thing, the first thing that you need to know is why ionic and covalent bonds form. So that's my question. The answer is that they form in differences in electro negativity, okay? Differences in electronegativity. So if there are two elements and there's a big difference in electronegativity, it's going to be an ionic bond, okay? That's something like sodium and chlorine, okay? So they have big electronegativity differences. These are the periodic trends that we talked about earlier. If there's a big electronegativity difference, then chlorine is going to take the electron and not let it go, and that's going to form an ionic bond. We took a test over that already. If it's a small difference in electronegativity, it's going to be a covalent bond. Okay, so you can write covalent bond. Covalent bonds is where neither element is strong enough to pull an electron away. So they have to kind of share them. So small differences in electronegativity are covalent bonds. So jumping over here, we're going to learn about Lewis structures. Okay, so these are all covalent bonds. All of these elements are all non-metals. So they have to, none of them have a big enough electronegativity to steal that electron. So they're going to share them. Okay. Now, the way that you do this is you have to figure out the number of valence electrons, okay? So I like to separate my elements out like this. And I know that hydrogen has one valence electron and chlorine has seven for a total of eight valence electrons, okay? So I'm gonna pause and, and jump over here to carbon dioxide and do that as well. So carbon, and then I have two oxygens right here. So I separate those out, carbon has four, and oxygen has six, but there are two oxygen atoms. So I'm gonna multiply that times two to equal 12. So when you add 12 plus four, you're gonna get a total of 16 electrons. Let me show you uh, where I found this number. So hydrogen has one and chlorine has seven from this table of elements here. So the way you figure that out is, um, is you count over from the left-hand side of the table of elements. So this is one element in, so it's gonna be one valence electron. For chlorine, chlorine is right here, okay? And so I count over from the left on that row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's got seven valence electrons. So if you don't know how to do valence electrons, pause that and watch it back again and learn how to find your valence electrons, okay? Now, to figure out, to, to draw this Lewis structure, you're gonna, you're gonna write both of the elements. So you got hydrogen and chlorine, and you're gonna give them a single bond. Each one of these single bonds counts for two electrons. I need to find eight, okay? So I start with two, four, six, eight. Now I look back and I make, and every element wants to have a total of eight electrons. So I count two, four, six, eight. He has eight and then hydrogen has two. Hydrogen is the only element that's happy with two. So this is the Lewis structure for hydrochloric acid, okay? Now I'm jumping over to CO2. This one's a little bit more difficult, so stick with me. We gotta find a total of 16 elements, I'm sorry, 16 valence electrons. My central element is gonna be my first element listed. Okay, so carbon, oxygen, oxygen. Okay, let me erase that to give myself some more room. So I've got two carbons, right? and one, I'm sorry, I've got two oxygens, oxygen, oxygen, and one carbon. And I have to find a total of 16 valence electrons. I have four, two here, two here. So two plus two is four. And then I start going six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, so I can't use, those are all of my electrons. I can't use any more. I go and I check all of my elements to make sure they have eight, because every element wants to have eight. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. The problem is carbon only has four, two, four. So he's not happy. The way you fix this is you take these valence electrons and you turn them into a double bond. Take those valence electrons and turn them into a double bond. So now oxygen still has eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. But now they're sharing two with carbon. So carbon has four, two, four, six, eight. How many minutes are we at? Four. Four. About to be five. Okay. Um, let me just jump to this one and then we'll we'll skip this one, okay? 
Now, nitrogen I know has five valence electrons, and I've got two L atoms of nitrogen. Fluorine has eight, seven, thank you, plus three, and hydrogen has one. So five times two is 10, seven times three is uh, 21, plus one, 22, 22. 31, 32, I need to find 32 total electrons. This one's gonna be a little tight in this box, but we're gonna make it work. Nitrogen is my central element, it's my first atom listed, and then I put all of my other elements around bonding to those central elements. So I got fluorine, 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 and then one hydrogen, okay? So three fluorines, F, F, F. Okay, I gotta find 32 valence electrons. I've used two, four, six, eight, 10, okay? So I'm gonna start counting at 10. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. I still haven't made it to 32 yet, so I'm gonna add on to my central elements. That's 30, 32. Two, four, six, eight, he's happy. 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 Two, four, six, eight, he's happy, and hydrogen happy with two. The Lewis structure, rewind. If you don't know how to do that, look that over again. All right, let's run over here to IUPAC. All right, IUPAC stands for International Union of Pre Precise and Applied Chemistry. It doesn't matter what that stands for, but you just need to learn how to name these alkanes. I start easy and I work harder, okay? I get to the harder ones down here. So let's, let's name this. The way you do that is you have prefixes for the number of carbons. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So very simply, I'm gonna call that octane. Call that octane because oct stands for eight, so octane. Same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is gonna be an octane, okay? The one issue is that when you number your carbons, you want your substituent groups to be at the lowest possible carbon. So if I count from the right, it will be carbon one, two, carbon three, and carbon four, if I count from the right. If I count from the left, it'll be carbon one, two, three, four, it'll be five and six. So five and six are obviously higher than three and four. So I wanna count from the right. So I wanna make this carbon one, this carbon two, this three, this is four, okay? So I'm gonna name that three comma four dimethyl octane. Three, four, carbon three, carbon four, right? Dimethyl, di meaning I have two methyl groups on an octane. All right, stick with me. I know this, is, this, this can be tough, but let's do one more, okay? Right down here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is gonna be a hex, hexane-ish. Okay, it's gonna be hex because I've got six carbons. Now I have, this is called an alcohol group. If you got an OH, you got an alcohol group. So you wanna num number that to where it's the lowest. It trumps everything. So it's carbon one, two, three, or carbon one, two, three, four. So I want to number from the right because that puts three is lower than four. So I'm gonna make one, two, three, four, five, six. What I'm doing is I'm numbering those carbons so that the alcohol group is the lowest. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> the way you number it, the way you name this is you name your substituents first, two, four, dimethyl, comma, three, hexanol. Let me explain that. Obviously, 2,4-dimethyl. I have two methyl groups on carbon 2 and carbon 4. So 2,4-dimethyl. That's easy. Carbon 3 is holding an alcohol group. So I name my parent strand hexanol. It's got six carbons, so hex. And then I end it in all because it's got an alcohol group. So 3-hexanol. Watch that back if you don't understand it. Right here, I'm going to draw these. 2,3-dimethyl heptane. I start at the back. Heptane is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I need two methyl groups on carbons two and three. Carbon two, carbon three. 
That's it. Carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, two methyl groups. There's a methyl group, there's a methyl group, dimethyl on a heptane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, stick with me. We got one more. This is a hard one. I know it's gonna, it's opt. So I'm gonna start at the back. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you remember, oct means eight. So it's got eight carbons, all right? I need two methyl groups on carbon three and four. So carbon one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. There's carbon three, there's carbon four. I got two methyl groups. Di means two, methyl means it's these substituents. Okay, and then I need an alcohol group on carbon two. So here's carbon two, and I'm gonna add an alcohol group, OH, right there to um, that octane. Again, last thing, class, just make sure that you study for this test. Rewind any of this back that you need to, um, and watch it again so you can learn all about IUPAC and Lewis structures. Thank you.